Burberry is set to launch their first NFTs with Mythical Games. The NFTs are going to be featured in Blanco's Block Party, and that's a blockchain game that features digital vinyl toys. So in the game, you have your character, and you can go on adventures and missions with your friends and have block parties. So there's the little Burberry Blanco. This was interesting to me because I think of Burberry as a very traditional fashion brand, and they usually market to, I think, an audience that is a little bit older than people who might play this game. And it's just, I didn't think that if Burberry got into NFTs, it would be in this way. And so I'm interested, Adam, to hear your thoughts on this partnership. Yeah, so luxury brands, I think, make a ton of sense uh, around this stuff because they want to be accessible and they want to be something that people aspire to own. So if you can make something that's either in the digital realm and that loops you in with culture, again, in a way that's a little bit more tangible versus, you know, being in real life and having a bag, you know, like that, that feels to me like it's a good fit. These are conversations, again, I, I, I had a number of conversations back in 2017, 2016, and kind of that area uh, with many of kind of these larger uh, companies talking about this stuff. And at the time, there was very little interest. And so, again, today to see this suggests that we have crossed a tipping point. And on the other side of that tipping point is everybody wants to do NFTs. And they are significantly changing how I think companies think about this stuff. And again, like I, I'm in the background developing a new show called NFT All-Stars, and we're reaching out to many of these larger groups and everybody is doing this. So again, there's the 10% of what we see that's already out there. And then there's, there's the other 90% of the culture coming fast behind. So to me, this is just another kind of signal that NFTs are going to be an increasingly big deal as time goes on. Yep. Yeah, so I agree Burberry... with you, Jen. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say each Burberry Blanco is $299. And if you go into the shop right now, everything is under 15 So it is a big jump as well. Uh, Naomi, I don't know if you want to finish your point. Hopefully I teed you up for whatever you were about to say. Yeah, I just, um, I, I just agree that it seemed to me like a mishmash of different branding ideas coming together in something that's so very strange to me like you know Burberry um is this luxury fashion brand and then you've got like this <laughs> vinyl nft toy and it's paired with like mythical games like it, there's a whole lot going on there um maybe you know as adam said we are just seeing more and more of this and maybe maybe things are just going to get weirder like i'm not against that i like weird things and if people are just like oh we're doing NFT NFT and let's just mix, mix and match like you know life is going to start to imitate the internet and i'm a fan of that so let's get weird and let's try out this nft stuff and mash a whole bunch of stuff together and see what happens i'm, I'm kind of here for that i did think it's weird but i'm also enjoying it i'm all for the weirdness as well will are you would you buy an nft like this or what brand would make you buy an NFT <laughs> yeah. like this. Let me rephrase that know. question. <laughs> I, I don't see the point of it still, but I will say that I was talking with someone yesterday and they said that when you play a game uh, nowadays, like an online game, like you can even go into like a car that you're driving around in like virtual reality and it'll start playing like pop songs that are like, you know, doing well today. And so that's interesting to note that like, there's so many different levels to like the worlds we're creating online. And I think that there's a place for like NFTs in that where like you're in a game and there's like items that you can do with this. And I don't know how that relates to this Burberry thing. I'm not into that. You seem to be. So that's awesome. But uh, it's that, still that's just so I early have. though. I mean, that, that's the thing I is again, like it's own still physical just things. early. Okay. I don't know if yeah, I'm the last too. person out there that still wants physical things, <laughs> yeah. like a real home and real clothes and real artwork. I don't know. I'm kind of waiting for us to turn into Sword Art <laughs> Online, where we all just hang out in our virtual reality houses and, you know, do our work together while living in something we created completely in the digital realm. I think that kind of stuff is kind of cool. Like, I don't know, we're like, exploring and yeah, we're pushing the boundaries of what our lived reality uh, it consists of. We've kind of gone from when we say that we know someone online, but we've never met them in real life. You know, we've started to not say that anymore. We started to say we've never met them in person because online is real life. And we're starting to realize that it's just adding another dimension to our real life. And it is all part of our experience. You know, you, you seem to like push back on that, Will. 
Yeah, no, that's like, I'm just thinking about this right now. And I, I get the feeling from you, you're very uh, anti eat the bugs, live in the pod. And this is like a backdoor to doing that, right? <laughs> you're going to live in the pod, not because someone tells you to, but because everyone went to the pod and you start living it. So no, we got to push back against this. Like there's a limit to how online people should be. We got to Wow. I love online. I love it. It's where so much communication and connection and like we've broken down the barriers of our physical lived existence, right? It's no longer the case that we can't interact with someone over the other side of the world. We have more in common with someone of our own generation on the other side of the planet than we do someone who probably lives the next town over who's a generation above us. Like I think that that mixing up of boundaries is super interesting. Like I'm definitely excited to see what happens. Yeah, I mean the uh, so to 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 uh, Will's point, <laughs> I think only three of the five scenarios wind up being wildly dystopian, right? There are some scenarios <laughs> where this winds up being empowering, and I think that again, maybe the odds aren't in our favor, but I'm hoping and believe that we could in fact have this be a positive. But as a digital native for the last 15 years, uh, you know, again, I've worked for CoinDesk for two years now, and I've never been into the office. Uh, you know, again, like it's this is this is the way, right? This is the way. Mm -hmm. And for all the things that coronavirus did that were very negative, you know, it did sort of uh, force people to jump into the deep end on using these tools in ways that I think many people never considered that they would. And most of the people who I know found them to be more empowering than they found them to be kind of negative. So, you know, it's a good news, bad news type of situation, but I have hope.